I'm excited to share about my recent trip to Frankfurt, Germany. I was invited by the leadership of Sun Network, and I'm grateful for the Sun Network in setting up this trip and helping church planters in North America connect with missionaries around the world and get to experience the nations. The purpose of this trip was to, to mobilize pastors, and that's why I went to, to help. And how could I learn, and how could our church get involved in supporting the work of the gospel around the world and, and seeing how God is at work among the nations? We were connected with a missionary family with the International Mission Board in Frankfurt named Kelly and Janice, and we learned about their work and particularly their work in helping start a coalition called the Mine Project, which is the kind of German pronunciation, what we might say main project, but it's, it's, the, it's a project on the cities of Frankfurt and Offenbach along the Mine River, those two cities that the, the river cuts between those two, Frankfurt to the north and Offenbach to the south. So in this video, I'll, I'll talk about uh, why we want to get involved in missions, the mission of God and the mission of the church. We'll look at the task or what do missionaries do? What is the work of a missionary? I'll talk about Frankfurt and Offenbach and the Mine Project, and I'll share some videos that are recorded in Germany of three different church planters that are a part of the network. Finally, we'll look at how we can partner in different ways that we can help and come alongside them. Followers of Jesus are called to help other people follow Jesus. And this involves loving and praying and serving and caring for our neighbors in our local context. But it also looks like getting involved and in supporting the work of the gospel, the good news of Jesus, going to the nations. So we have this calling of focusing and supporting and, and seeking to be missional ourselves in, in and amongst our neighborhoods and loving our neighbors as ourselves. But I also think we have a calling and a responsibility and a privilege to come alongside those who are taking the, the gospel to the nations, because we believe God has a heart for the nations, and we'll consider that as we see the mission of God that's described in some of the following verses that you'll see up on the screen. We've been invited to participate and to join God in his mission to share his love with the world. So Psalm 4610 says, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. This is God's promise. This is his heart. This is his mission. This is his initiative. He is going to be exalted among the nations. He says through the prophet Ezekiel, I will show my greatness and my holiness and make myself known in the eyes of many nations. And they will know that I am the Lord. In Habakkuk, we read this beautiful promise of the earth being filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So this is what God wants. This is his mission. This is his task. He is making himself known among the world, among the nations. This is in fact how the story of the Bible, the, the great story of the Bible ends in Revelation. It starts with God calling a family and, and through the family of Abraham and through the, the Jews and through Jesus and through the new covenant community of the church, God is going to make himself known to the nations. So Revelation 7, 9. After this, I looked and behold a great multitude that no one could number from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages standing before the throne. This is the final vision of the people of God. It's all nations. And how will those nations hear about God? How will they learn the good news of Jesus by God's people being sent to them and by God's people supporting those who are sent. Isaiah 2.2, 2, the mountain of the house of the Lord shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be lifted up above the hills and all the nations shall flow to it. This beautiful image of the nations coming to worship God. Isaiah says later, I will make you, speaking on behalf of God, as a light for the nations, that my salvation may reach to the end of the earth. So God is going to reach the nations through his people, the light for the nations, the people who take his salvation to the ends of the earth. Jesus continues this, this idea of mission and the mission of God, and he commands and he commissions his church to continue on and to participate with God in his mission to reach the nations. The Great Commission, Matthew 28, 19, Jesus says to his disciples, go and make disciples 
of all nations. Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, I also send you. So the people of God, the church, the disciples of Jesus, followers of Jesus are a sent people. We're a missional people. We've been sent with a purpose. Jesus tells the disciples in Acts 1.8, you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So we have a responsibility as a church, not only that we might proclaim the excellences of him who called you out of his marvelous light where we are, but I believe we have a responsibility to support those in our local context who are going out. And we have a responsibility to support and partner with those churches that are proclaiming the gospel around the world to work together, to build one another up, and to see the mission of God accomplished. As I was in Frankfurt in the Mind Project, they talked about something called the missionary task. And they, they talked about how people oftentimes don't exactly know what do missionaries do. So when you hear the word missionary, we think, what does a missionary do? What kind of things come to mind? What pictures might come into your mind or things that you might think missionaries do? And they presented this helpful graphic that I'll show up on the screen called the missionary task. So when a missionary comes and is sent from a church, from an agency to a city, they want to abide in Christ and they want to help others abide in Christ. And they have a a movement that is, is not necessarily linear, that it can repeat and, and go around and around, but these are some of the main things that they want to see. The main job of a missionary is entry. They come into a city, a culture, a people group, and they, they might learn the language, they might learn the culture. What is the best way in which we can present and communicate the gospel to these people and removing as many barriers as we can except the barrier of the gospel itself? And then they do evangelism which similar to the greater Seattle area in Frankfurt, it's, it's much more a relational approach, relational evangelism, uh, earning trust with people who are uh, probably mo- mostly skeptical of religion or they, they think they had it figured out. So it's evangelism and oftentimes through relationship and then there's discipleship. So it's go make disciples. We make disciples as we evangelize and we form those disciples. We teach the disciples to observe what Jesus has commanded. We're, we're conformed to the image of God. This is, this is what discipleship is. And as people are converted to Christianity, as people become followers of Jesus, they're gathered into churches. And they want to see healthy church formation where it in every individual member is using their gifts to serve the body. They're working together. They're seeking to maintain the unity of the spirit and leaders are being developed in those churches. And, and the end goal of a missionary is, is exit. It's to see local ownership. It's to see natu- national indigenous pastors raised up in, in the city. So this is the goal of a missionary. This is the missionary task. And of all the places in the world, why are we considering Frankfurt? Why do I believe that the Lord is leading us to Frankfurt? What, what is special about Frankfurt or, or why would we decide to partner with what is going on in Frankfurt? And, and I want to say first, we have a lot to learn, I think. Being, and, and what I learned in Frankfurt and, and how Europe and the context are kind of similar in spiritual and social climate, I think we have a lot to learn from what they're doing in, in the city. And we have an opportunity to learn in Frankfurt from the missionary leaders of the Greater Europe Mission, of the International Mission Board, and in city to city, from some of the, the most strategic missional thinkers in Europe. But Frankfurt is a, a key global international city. It's a multicultural mission field. It's a center for finance and for transportation. The, the bank of the European Union is in Frankfurt. It also has a, one of the largest airports in Europe and a huge train, uh, subway station in Frankfurt. Some important facts about the city is I learned that Germans and, and they really care about statistics. They know statistics. They like statistics, but statistically evangelicals are so few in number that they're not even counted in government studies. They're so few. (laughs) The estimates were anywhere from point one to point three percent of the population is evangelical. 
Frankfurt has a population of 3.3 million in the metro area and in the the surrounding region, there's about 5.5 million and there's about 180 nationalities in the city. 54% of the population comes from a non-German background. The next slide you'll see up on your screen is a a graphic that Kelly had made and showed me as we were learning about the MIND project. And this is a graphic that shows the amount of people that you would need to meet in Frankfurt before you met another Christian. So you see those neon blue little icons in a sea of dark gray representing the non-Christians. The, there's a, such a few percentage of evangelical believers in Germany. Frankfurt is a, a financial hub. It's, it's very much a banking center. So there's a high professional population. 70, 77% are professionals. There's 15% students. There's a large multicultural background, so 54% uh, is a very diverse place. But as you, as you immigrate into Germany, and if you move to Germany, if you're a refugee into Frankfurt and into Germany, they, it's actually required to learn German. So a large population speaks German, and this is strategic for church planting efforts in Frankfurt because through the language of German, you can reach many different cultures and ethno-linguistic groups that might migrate through, that you might come for a couple years. There's just a lot of opportunity as people come in and out of the city to hear the gospel and to take the gospel back to their people, their nations, their cultures, and see the gospel expand. So Kelly and Janice, the International Mission Board missionaries, helped start, along with some other leaders, something called the Mine Project. And this is their desire to see a movement of the gospel in Frankfurt and Offenbach. So the Mine River is what goes between these two cities, Frankfurt to the north and Offenbach to the south. And they call it the Mine Project because they want to see this general region, this area, where churches and networks are working together to make a difference in their city. And as I talked about what they've identified in city networks in Europe, or I've seen this very much too in, in America, there's kind of some different stages or different involvement that networks and churches might have in a city. The most unhelpful, most unhealthy, I would say, would be the compete. So it's not working together on the same team. It's, it's like we're against each other. We're fighting for territory or people. It's, it's competing against each other. Well, the next step, they said they, they didn't also just want to coexist. In other words, they didn't just want to have churches that were in the same city, but didn't know each other, didn't talk to each other, didn't think together, didn't pray together. And they didn't necessarily even want to have a network or have churches that communicated together. They also didn't just want to have churches that cooperated. They wanted to have a kind of collaboration where churches are coming together for prayer, for training, actually planting churches together. And this was their, this was their goal. They want to see a coalition of healthy, multiplying churches among each neighborhood and segment of the city take ownership in the areas of prayer collaboration, training, sending, and recruiting, and networking with other European and global cities. So, Because Frankfurt is a global city, it's an international city, what is happening in Frankfurt is kind of unique, but the goal is that this it's not just a kind of collaboration that stays in Frankfurt, but it's something that spreads throughout other cities across Europe. And the exit goal, what they want to see as they, Lord willing, one day move or, or pass on is They want to see local, healthy, and multiplying churches exist, reaching into each sphere of society, into each people group and neighborhood, stewarding the missional task. There's been some really cool things that have happened. It's taken a lot of groundwork and relationship and trust to build this kind of a collaboration together. But over the last 10 years, from 2014 coming into 2024, they're going to see 10 churches planted in 10 years. But there's still a lot of work to be done. They, there are many neighborhoods where there's no gospel-centered churches. I, I talked with one church planter who was seeking to plant a church in a new district of Frankfurt up north. And it was a, a new area. New condos and apartments were being built and houses. About 20,000 people lived in this area, and there was not a single gospel-centered church, not a single evangelical church. 
So some of the ways that, that the Mind Project, the leaders come together to collaborate is they actually offer missional training to anyone in the city that is a part of this network. And the first level of training they offer is something called M1. And this is for, for any disciple, any Christian in the city that wants to learn how to live on mission. So what does it mean to live sent as John recorded, you know, Jesus says, the Father sent me, so I'm going to send you. What does it mean to live with a kind of intentionality to help people meet Jesus in the everyday things that we do? The next level of training they called M2, and this is for leaders of groups. So how do we lead a, a group, a small group? Many of the many of the house churches there are called something called missional communities. How do we lead groups to be on mission? And and finally the third step or third stage of training is M3. And this is for planters and house pastor, house church pastors and missionary leaders to think about revitalization or starting new churches that are on mission. So some of the planters that I got to meet have been through this training. They're, they're being sent out from kind of an M3 stage. And I got to meet about two to three planters per day. So I got to meet a lot. But there were three guys that, that I'll feature in this video that I took uh, videos of to introduce themselves. And one of them is a guy named Bodo Park. And Bodo is planting south of Frankfurt in something called the Sud Project. And their church meets every other week in kind of a large gathering of five different house churches. And he is the house church pastor of a, a local, you know, every other week they meet and it's called Refresh House Church. So you'll get to see Bodo Park introduce himself and share about his church now. Hey guys, my name is Bodo Park. I'm a church planter here in Germany, Frankfurt. And five years ago, we started a church plant, a house church with 10 to 12 people. And now it has grown and it's multiplied to five house churches right now in our beautiful neighborhoods. It is called Sachsenhausen. And our church name is Frankfurt Süd South Project. And uh, yeah, our vision is uh, just to make disciples uh, throughout the daily life uh, and sharing life together, eating together, um, celebrate together, rest together. And through all of these uh, things, we want to share the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ and uh, to disciple other people who then can disciple other people. And uh, yeah, so we love uh, our family community. So you can see uh, our house church in the garden. We have barbecue now. We have invited lots of friends uh, in our neighborhood and uh, just to have a good time with them together and to share the good gospel. So uh, yeah, we are very happy uh, that we have people from your church here uh, in Frankfurt. And uh, we just want to say greetings to you and uh, wish you God's blessing. Bye. The next pastor that I'll highlight for you, the next church planter that I'll display here is a guy named Marcus. And Marcus is planting north of Frankfurt in a new district, uh, a district that's primarily of, made up of young families. There wasn't a lot of families in the urban core of Frankfurt, but as couples were getting married or they'd want to settle down and start a family, they'd move further out. And Marcus is a, is a new church planter, just started a church and a Bible study uh, in the city. Hey guys, my name is Marcus, and me and my wife Maddie, we're church planters here in Frankfurt. We're in a district that's not even on the map. It's the newest district of Frankfurt. It's right up there. Right now we're down here, and uh, so it's a little bit up north. We started in about 2021 when we moved to the district. I worked full-time as a barista, and now we have a team of about seven people and a small Bible study going of about we're about 20 people and um, yeah, it's really exciting. It's a new district, a lot of people with very little time, both parents working, a lot of kids, usually more than two kids, which is not very common in Germany. And it's awesome because God has um, given us a great connection to the Chinese people in the neighborhood. And so uh, we were able to baptize uh, a Chinese girl um, who gave her life to Christ and now her whole family is following suit and you can definitely be praying for them. Um, yeah, as God has kind of opened a door uh, to the Chinese community, which is very strong in this district. Yeah, and uh, if you have any questions, come and visit me in Frankfurt. <laughs> and lastly, you'll get to hear from a guy named Lionel. And Lionel is, is south of the Main River in a city called Offenbach. And he, had a, he has a vision uh, where in a, in a city that's primarily made up of, of apartment uh, complexes, and in those apartments are, are the inner courts. 
And that's primarily where the social life is. That's where a lot of interaction is. The kind of gates are locked uh, on the outside of those courts. And so a lot of what happens in interaction happens in those inner courts of the apartments. And he wanted to see a family on mission or a, a missional community in every one of those apartment courts. And you'll get to hear from Lionel uh, now. Hello, I'm Lionel Bendobal. I'm pastor in, and church planter in Offenbar, in the Frankfurt greater area. The pastor of Kishamstadt, a church that established here in the last seven years, and now we are starting a second campus in our suburb. We are living in the midst of an international city, the most international in whole Germany. And the prayer request I will have is that you may pray for more workers for what the missions we are doing. And when I mean more workers, I mean more and more people in our community that get convinced and get the courage to step into the mission where they are, and more and more people will just come alongside just to reach and save those who doesn't know the Lord. Pray for workers. Thank you very much. All right, so we heard from Bodo and from Marcus and from Lionel. There's many other church planters and pastors that are part of the MIND project that, that I could share information with. And if you were curious and learning more, uh, we can have those conversations and I can share more. But those were three guys that I wanted to highlight. Uh, and as we conclude this video, I want to talk about what are some ways that we can help? How could we come alongside? What are some ways that we can get involved? And the first is prayer. We can pray that God would continue to raise up leaders, that God would continue to raise up pastors who have sound doctrine, who are going to share the good news of Jesus in a very uh, underreached place of the city. We can support the work of the Mind Project in praying by name for the pastors and leaders and networks and missional communities that are involved in the city. Next, what we can do is we can give. And when you give to the Mountain Church, part of your money goes to uh, the International Mission Board. We give to missionaries in a, in, a general, in a general sense to the mission agencies, but we could also give specifically to special projects that might come up within the MIND Project, or we could give uh, just to support the MIND Project itself, to support uh, the training and the staff and all that goes involved in the system to see the gospel movement that's happening there in Frankfurt. And finally, we can go. That's what I'm excited about. I want to get back to Frankfurt. Lord willing, we will be back in Frankfurt. I would love to see our church send a team, a smaller team maybe, about six people for a week or 10 days to go learn about the Mind Project, to go to encourage, to go to serve, to go discover what God is doing and to, to experience the nations and to see God and pray that God would cultivate more in our heart a desire to see not only our neighborhoods, loved and cared for and see gospel presence there, but in the nations. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, please reach out and love to have a conversation with you. I want to thank you so much for praying for me. So many of you sent me texts and, and messages and emails praying for me as I was in Germany. And please continue to pray as we reflect, as we seek the Spirit's guidance. How can we come alongside and support and partner with what's happening in Germany and supporting the gospel ministry happening in Frankfurt. Thanks.